Snack? No, don't make out again. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Where you come back to now? Video. We are going to take a look at yet another diamond, Desukureji diamond. <laughs> Goodness, I should kill myself, seriously. So uh, yeah, this time um, this is Pascal's diamond fraction. This is the name I gave this thing. And it's kind of obvious why it has the name because it's 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, and so on up until the nth iteration, what the nth row really looks like. We are going to take a look at this in a second. But at first, we are going to define ourselves how xn looks like, so our sequence of this quotient of numerator and denominator, what it actually looks like. And then we are going to work through numerical examples to arrive at a nice solution yet again. And the solution is actually pretty spicy because it unfolds from a casework thing to one single sequence formula, which is really cool in my opinion. So keep watching, watch time really helps out the channel. And now we are going to dive right in. Now, at first, we are going to say that this thing is xn yet again. So this is just the diamond of the nth degree. We are going to have n rows yet again in this diamond. So first row, second row, third row, fourth row, blah, 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 up until the nth row. Meaning this right here is our xn. And how could we always express xn? So if you don't know what I'm talking about, links to all the videos will be down in the description. This is yn over zn. Okay, this was just a quotient of sequences. And this quotient of sequences actually turned out, if everything worked out, to be 1 over the summation of the entries of the nth row squared times x n minus 2. This is what we have found out previously. Now we just need to take a look at what the summation of the nth row actually looks like. This is the only thing we, we really need to compute everything else. So let us take a look at the first row. So the first row is just 1. 1 was 2 to the 0 of power. First row, 2 to the 0 of power. Second row is going to give us 2 to the first power. Second row, 2 to the first power. Okay, then we have, this is the third row, but this is 1 plus 1 plus 2 is going to give us 4. This is 2 squared. Third row, 2 squared. What about a fourth row, for example? Fourth row is going to give us, well, this is nothing but 8, so this is 2 to the third power. Meaning, for the nth row, so this is the fourth row, we are going to get an exponent of n minus 1 overall. Um, this is just a consequence of an index shift here because we start with an index of 1, even though the sum of the entries of the nth row of Pascal's triangle start at 0. This is just a consequence from this index shift that we are doing here. Meaning, on our nth row, we are going to get something of this sort, 1 plus, okay, here we had the fourth row, we had a 3 here as the next number. We had a third row, we had a 2, meaning it's always n minus 1 plus dot 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 up until n minus 1 plus 1. And same should be here, 1 plus n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus n minus 1 plus 1. This is what the diamond is going to look like and the nth row, the summation of the nth row is going to be 2 to the n minus 1th power. And this basically settles it already. This is pretty good because now we can plug this into here. We are going to get 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 power and the whole thing squared times xn minus 2. And well, now we can just use exponentiation rules here to arrive at xn being equal to 1 over 2 to the 2n minus 2 power x n minus 2. And this is basically it for now. Now we have a recurrent solution that you can solve using induction if you have a closed solution, which we are going to get in a second. Um, you can make use of linear algebra analysis to solve this recurrent solution. I leave it up to you. We are going to take a look at special numerical values. Use this definition to kind of advance a bit to x6, x7, x8 for example. And then we are going to see if we can find a certain pattern. So let us start off with x1. So what is x1? x1 is when we have n being equal to 1, meaning for n being equal to 1, we are going to have just this first row basically. It's going to be 1 over 1, which is nothing but 1. Okay, coolio, this was easy. What about 
X2. X2 is going to be a bit more spicy. This is going to be two rows, so one over one plus one. And now the reflection across the main vinculum is going to be one plus one over one. Okay, this is going to give us, okay, this is one half and then over two, basically over two over one is just over two, giving us one over two squared. Okay, now we have calculated x1 and x2. We needed this because um, if we were to use this formula on the first um, two rows, basically, on the first two iterations, then we would end up with x0, which is not defined for ourselves yet again, uh, or for, for now, basically, and x of negative one, if we were to plug in one. So this is also not defined right now. So we, we got rid of those cases using um, just our hands here, just a bit of thinking, and now we can make use of this formula at n being equal to three. So what about x3? x3 is going to be, by this definition, one over two to the, okay, two times three is six, minus two is going to give us four, one, over 2 to the 4th power times x1, so 3 minus 2 is going to give us 1, and x1 is nothing but 1. So yeah, been there, done that. This has been an achievement somewhere. In which game? I can't remember. Never mind. Now what about x4? <laughs> x4 is going to give us. Okay, now we are going to plug a 4 into here. This is 8, minus 2 is going to give us 6. 1 over 2 to the 6th power. Maybe you can already see a pattern. We are going to have 1 over 2 to the 0th power. Then 1 over 2 squared. 1 over 2 to the 4th power. 1 over 2 to the 6th power. Meaning we are always going to raise the exponent of the first factor here by 2 basically yet again. Oh, it's just a consequence of the summation that we are having here. All right. So now 1 over 2 to the 6th power times x2 and x2 is 1 over 2 squared. Meaning 1 over 2 squared is going to give us 1 over 2 to the 8th power. Now one could already start doing a few assumptions here, for example, well our exponent here is going to be just 2n for example, okay, 1 over 2 to the 2nth power works for n being equal to 4, how about n being equal to 3, oh 1 over 2 to the 4th power, no this is not 2n, 4 is not equal to 6, at least not in the natural numbers. So this doesn't work out, so let us go a few steps further to see if we can find maybe a different pattern that fits our needs here. So what about x5? x5 is going to be 1 over 2 to the 8th power, we just discussed this, times x3, x3 is 1 over 2 to the 4th power, which is thus nothing but 1 over 2 to the 12th power. Okay, now another assumption, how could we express our 12 with respect to 5? Well, maybe 2 times 5 plus 2, mm, what about 4? 2 times 4 plus 2 is going to give us 10, okay, doesn't work out. Let us go one step further, maybe there's a completely different pattern that we are not seeing yet with those few iterations that we are having at hand right now. What about x6? This is 1 over 2 to the 10th power times x4 and x4 has been 1 over 2 to the 8th power which is going to give us 1 over 2 to the 18th power. Hmm, okay, now we are going to have 18. What about um, maybe 2 to the 3 times n? Okay, this does work out for 18, but doesn't work out for 5. 3 times 5 is going to give us 15. Doesn't work out yet again. Mm, uh, we need to go further. We don't see it yet. Now let us do one last iteration and maybe we can see a pattern then. It's, it's kind of a complicated pattern. It took me one or two minutes to actually find it out for myself. So now for x7, we are going to get, okay, 1 over 2 to the 12th power, it should be, 2 to the 12th power, times, and then x5, x5 has been 2 to the 12th power. 1 over 2 to the 12th power gives us 1 over 2 to the 24th power. Hmm, this is where I actually started seeing a certain pattern and the pattern became clear to me when I looked at the even cases for now. This is where we are going to start off and then we are going to work further for the odd cases. Now, if we take a look at 18, 18 is actually half of 36. It's half of 36 and how is 36 related to 6? Well, 6 times 6, so 6 squared is nothing but 36. Meaning, what we can do is we can express this 18 as 1 over 2 to the 6 squared over 2. Okay, 
this does make sense, to be honest. It does make sense. Does it make sense for maybe this one right here? What is 4 squared exactly? 1 over 2. Okay, 4 squared is going to give us 16. And this whole thing over 2 is going to give us 8. Hey, this does work out. This is amazing. How about n being equal to 2? Well, then we are going to have a 1 over 2. Okay, 2 squared is 4 over 2 is going to give us 2. This does work out. So it does seem like xn, for even n's at least, is exactly 1 over 2 to the n squared over 2. It seems to be the case that this holds and you can prove by induction that this does hold indeed. But what about our odd ends? If we were to apply this technique basically to our odd ends. Okay, 7 squared is going to give us 49. Ah, it's not divisible by 2. Freaking hell. 49 over 2 is 24.5. 24.5? This is actually pretty close because, you know, if we were to take the floor, so if we take 7 squared over 2, this is going to give us 24.5. If we were to take the floor here, then we would actually get 24 overall, which is exactly what we were seeking. So basically, we are going to rewrite this as 1 over 2 to the floor of um, 7 squared over 2. Does this work for the other odd cases too? I mean, even cases they are already done. What about 5? 5 squared is going to give us 25 over 2 is 12.5. Taking the floor of that is exactly 12. This does work out. So it seems that we can express our odd ends as being 1 over 2 to the floor of n squared over 2. And this for n odd. So we have some casework done now. But um, I wasn't satisfied with the casework just because um, it's always good to get like a complete formula for both odd and even cases. And then it struck me like lightning. <laughs> if we have n being even, then for example, if we have um, 6 squared over 2. Okay, let us take a look at the floor of 6 squared over 2. This is exactly the floor of, okay, we know this is 18. And the floor of a natural number is just a number in itself. Oh, goodness. This was the best thing ever. So this was like really cool upon finding it out. We can actually turn our xn into just this case of the odd ones because it trivially holds for the even ends too. So our final formula for xn is going to be 1 over 2 to the floor of n squared over 2. This is our xn and you can prove it by induction that this does indeed hold. And I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, recommend, share, and like. Don't forget, out, uh, don't, don't forget to check out all the other prerequisite videos like the other diamonds and whatsoever. Also, um, share those, video, those videos around in general um, if you have the resources to do so like Reddit, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatsoever. It really helps the channel out a lot if we drive a few more subscribers in. Um, actually next week I'm going to be on vacation for a few days so I'm probably not going to post any videos there just as a little side note and yeah thank you guys for watching don't forget to check out Flammy 2 and subscribe to it and up until next week I wish you guys flamble day. Ciao!